introduction when you start recording. Welcome to the Money Smart for Small Business workshop series presented by the Urban Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us. We are today, October 20th, 2022, having our record keeping webinar for small business. And our host and facilitator is Leah Crawford, owner of Crawford Management Group. Take it away, Leah. Thank you, Delisa. Um, welcome to Record Keeping for Small Business. By taking this training, you are taking an important step in building a better business. It all starts with understanding the basics of record keeping. Our agenda today, we will discuss concepts, do group and individual activities, and have time for your questions. There will be at least one 10 minute break during the class. Ground rules. If you have experience or knowledge in some aspect of the material, please share ideas with the class. One of the best ways to learn is from each other. You might be aware of some method that has worked well for you or some pitfalls to avoid. Your class contribution will enhance the learning experience. If something is not clear, please ask questions. My name is Leah Crawford. I am the owner of Crawford Management Group. I have been doing record keeping for a very long time in business in the Valley, though, for about 2007, 24, about 15 years. Um, I have an accounting degree from Howard University. I am an enrolled agent registered with the IRS. So I understand a little bit about record keeping, the importance and different tools that you can use to make it um, a less painful process. Each of you has a copy of the record keeping um, for small business participation guide. If you do not have one, please, in watching this webinar, please contact the Urban Chamber of Commerce. It makes it a lot easier for you to follow us with this um, series if you have the guide. Um, what questions do you have about the training? What questions do you have about record keeping? You know, write those down because we might answer those questions while going through this webinar. If you have questions, post. Feel free. You can contact me. My number is 702-382-5737, or you can email me at Leah, L-E-A-H-A, -A at Crawford, C R A W F O R D, M as in Mary, G as in girl dot com. I look forward to hearing from you, look forward to working with you because record keeping is very, very important. After completing this training, you will be able to explain the concept of record keeping and why record keeping is important for small businesses. You will be able to identify record keeping practices, rules and tools which are commonly available to a small business. You will be able to explain how these record keeping practices, rules and tools work. Identify the businesses, identify the benefits a business derives from proper record keeping, especially us going through COVID. Record keeping became very important for small business owners. If you receive the Paycheck Protection Loan, PPP or the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, EIDL, record keeping, record keeping, record keeping, how you keep and maintain those records is very important. We will explain how some just some record keeping basics, so some tips and tricks that you might need to know, and we will identify some software packages that are available for small businesses. Delisa, I can't see how many participants we have on the call. How many are we working with? One so far. OK. Um, Ma'am, do you have any questions so far? Can you introduce yourself? I'm, I'm Dr. Isom, um, and no, I don't have any questions. <laughs> but if you do have any questions, please stop me if I'm not explaining something. I, I really appreciate the feedback. OK. The objectives um, for today we are, we, I mean, we're really going to touch on some basic stuff. Um, and I really want the feedback because this area, while it's very simple, can also be very challenging because it is very simple. What do you want to learn about bookkeeping? Hmm. Before we begin, we will see what you know about record keeping. So we have a small, um, it's a 
brochure, um, I'm sorry, a questionnaire before the training, and I think it's on page four of your participation guide. If you get a moment, take a chance, go through that, and just see what you already know. And let's see if we can change those scores after the training. The term record keeping refers to the orderly and disciplined practice of storing business records. Record keeping is one of the most important responsibilities as a small business owner. The success of your business depends on creating and maintaining an effective record keeping system. Whether your business is a sole proprietor, partnership, or corporation, I will say it again, record keeping is also essential because if your records are not kept, there's no way you can monitor finance. You can't do financial management because you need good numbers in order to make projections to know what you're doing. Very important that you keep your records. Record keeping ranges from simple a manila folder filing system to complex online electronic systems. Whether simple or complex, a record keeping system must be easy to use and provide adequate storage and retrieval of records. Most importantly, the record keeping system you choose must be suited to your particular business needs. The type, size, and complexity of your business, as well as your business's available resources, will help you determine the record keeping system best suited for you and your business. Also, as a business owner, you want to keep your personal records. Very important because you want to keep your personal records separate from your business records. You should all as well recommendation is you should also establish an effective record keeping system for your personal information. For examples, when you apply for a business loan, a lender may want to consider your personal records, such as financial statements for your personal checking account, savings account, and other business loans. Next slide. Record keeping is not solely about fulfilling regulations or legal requirements. Record keeping is also understanding your business now and in the future. Reasons why you should keep good records include detail tracking, planning, legal compliance, and my favorite, I know, you know, tax preparation. Love it. Let's go through each of these reasons in further detail. So detail tracking. Owning a small business will require you to track a significant amount of information such as customers, sales, inventory. Without a paper record keeping system, a proper, I'm sorry, without a proper, it used to be paper, without a proper record keeping system, you may lose sight of important business details leading to problems with serving your customers. If you don't know the details about your customers, such as your who your customers are, what your customers like, your business may not be able to meet buyer demands. You risk disappointing a customer, maybe losing that customer forever. Staying informed of customers, their orders, and the inventory to provide for their purchases is challenging. Without a proper record keeping system tracking, without a proper record keeping system, tracking important details of your business may be impossible. Very important. I've been in business for 15 years, as I stated earlier, um, and I have records of all of my transactions. I have used a QuickBooks platform for the financial records, so I can pull my financial statements from each year and different notes on clients. But I chose to use QuickBooks and learned how to use QuickBooks and learned how to make QuickBooks work for me. Work for me. There are other software systems. There's Sage. There's Page. There's um, Sage products. There are CRM systems. We really need to find out what system works for you. If you are, you know, some people still use um, a paper system where they're using Excel spreadsheets. Don't normally recommend it, but that is a way um, for you to keep track of your records. But you want to have something that if you're asked a question about a transaction in the past, you can answer that question. Planning. Proper record keeping helps to plan your business. How does a business owner who fails to track his customers determine inventory needs for the next quarter, year, or longer. For example, what if you own a clothing store? Clothing store owners must anticipate the need for inventory throughout the year due to seasonal, seasonal cycles. 
By knowing if and when inventory will be needed, you can anticipate the need to finance inventory. You can also avoid carrying too little or too much inventory, such as extra swimsuits into the fall season. Very important if record keeping is crucial in any business, but when you're talking about carrying inventory, obsolete inventory, it becomes a daunting task because you want your inventory to turn over. Again, having accurate records, being able to look not only at your inventory, but on your financial statements and have your records and have it reflect what you're actually holding is crucial. It's time management, understanding what you need to do, how you need to do, and more importantly, getting it done. Legal compliance. As an owner, you will likely execute contracts and be required to hold various licenses and permits. As an employer, you will be required to maintain and report employee payroll for taxes. In my experience over the years, one of the number one reasons, um, well, a, a, a reason, I'm saying number one, a reason why companies fail can be employer taxes because they didn't keep the records, they didn't classify their employees properly, no one did the research or had the hard conversation for them to understand. Do you have an employee? Do you have a subcontractor? But what is the difference? As a business owner, you need to understand the difference because that's simply budgeting. Understand if you hire someone and the IRS says that this person is an employee, well, what are the things that you need to have in place in order for you to monitor, to basically pay this employee? If because of the guidelines, they can be deemed a contractor. What are the things that you need to have in place for them to be a contractor? Very important as a business owner that you understand the difference between an employee and a contractor. And then what documents do you need to have for an employee, which are different, different documents you need to have for a contractor? Contracts, leases, and other agreements. Having a good system for maintaining contracts is critical. Most business owners sign contracts for services, sales, financing, leasing, purchasing, just to name a few contract types. You may need to refer back to a contractual obligation. You may also need to refer to activities in contract as the activities as the activities are executed. For your own protection, keep track of contractual obligation by always maintaining the original signed copies of all legally executed contracts. Again, I'm going to say it again. Always maintain original signed copies of all legally executed documents. What does that mean? OK, well, what if we sign them electronically? If you sign them electronically, you have the I think it's e-signature document. You have the document, maintain a copy of it. If you're using cloud servers, find a file, find a file folder, keep it in the cloud server and know how to access it. Put all your signed contracts in one place. Just make sure that you can readily access them because you never know when you have to go back, reread that contract, renegotiate that contract, look to see who was supposed to perform what, when, where, how, and why. Very important that you keep contracts. In some instances, I'm very old fashioned where um, I want the paper, I want to feel the paper. And I had to, you know, and I have a file where I keep my home stuff separately, business stuff in another file. And it's kind of like um, an accordion file and I can show you something like this. And I can flip through and I have my different contracts together in a file, but I also have a scan copy so that if I want to feel the paper, I can read it. If I'm on my phone and I'm out and I have a question, I can look it up. Just always have an access to my information because I don't want to speak inappropriately or out of context. And I want to, I need to understand as a business owner, what am I required to do? Am I living up to my expectations? And how can I hold someone else accountable in a professional manner when, you know, I sign contracts for services, licensing, licensing and permits. Very also, well, everything is crucial. And it might seem like a lot, but once you get in the flow, you know, it kind of flows, kind of happen, it kind of happen. Licensing and permits. Local, state, federal, and international governments require various business licenses and permits. 
Some business activities require a license or permit. Licensing and permits ex are uh, the licensing and permitting examples include a city business license, a DBA, a seller's permit, a home occupation use permit, or food preparation permit. Professions such as an accountant, which I am, an architect, or a building contractor require state licensure. Be sure to check with government agencies and professional associations that govern your line of work. Once you have the required licenses and permits for your business, you may be required to show these licenses and permits from time to time. Contractors may be required to show proof of insurance. Establish your business with a good system for maintaining and regu regularly renewing licensing and permitting documents to protect to protect the business from penalties, fines, and other legal actions. Stop, let's talk about that. Best practices. State of Nevada, I am a tax preparer. If you are not an enrolled agent, an accountant, or a CPA, you need to have a document preparation license. It was passed in our 2017 legislative session. What does that mean? If you go somewhere to get your taxes done, they are not, if they are not an enrolled agent, a CPA, or uh, an attorney, they need to have a document preparation license hanging in their office. Other thing, we are we are notaries in our office. We have to have notary and we also have, also have to have a notary bond. Every time we do something, we take the time to understand what are the licensing requirements. I have a corporation in the state of Nevada. Annually, I have to renew my corporate status. What do I do? I set reminders set reminders in my calendar and I did it for the first year and I said I'm remind me of this indefinitely and I keep the licenses on the wall and every once in a while I'll just look through and I'll see okay I know in December for my office my business license is time to renew so I am looking for something from the city of Las Vegas to say that I need to renew my business license for my office I look for it I plan for it because I want to stay in compliance because I do not want to be fined for operating a business in this state without a license. Payroll and personnel. If you hire your employees, your record keeping capacity needs to be advanced enough to comply with numerous local, state, and federal payroll personnel legal requirements. Depending on the number of employees you hire, your business may require a payroll service. Otherwise, if you record, if you if you if your record keeping and accounting capacity is still developing, consider hiring independent contractors or hiring through an employment agency. Here is a brief list of some of the payroll and personnel legal information your business will be required to track. Hiring and evaluation documentation, basis on which wages are paid, social security numbers, total hours work, additions to or deductions from wages, total wages paid each pay period, income tax withholding, Fair Labor Standards Act required information, injury reports, employment records, copy of annual performance evaluation. Again, payroll and personnel record keeping requirements can be extensive, can be extensive. If you hire a new employer, hire a professional payroll service, talk to your account and read online at irs.gov publication 15 and go to link circular E for the um, for the it, for the tax requirements. I'm sorry, I just it was a bug that that just flew in front of me. And if anybody knows me, I'm kind of jumpy when it comes to to gnats and stuff. I just got some plants at home. All right, um, payroll. Said it before, I'll say it again. Crucial best practices. You know you're not good at it. You know you're not keeping the documents. Um, not your strong point, hire payroll service, hire payroll service. Most of them have a HR component. They can help you with this. If you are adventurous and you are a DIYer, I am with payroll. A lot of record keeping have to. I mean, all of these documents, we have them, we keep them. Um, and there are some hybrid, I call them hybrid services where they will run the payroll for you, help you pay the taxes, but then you have to keep all the manual stuff. With most payroll companies, they have an HR function that can assist you with these services um, and help you while you're learning and while you're learning um, about them and what are the best practices for your industry. Do not get sidetracked in thinking someone is a contractor when they're actually an employee. 
very important that you understand Circular E. The Circular E guides whether or not you are a contractor or whether or not you are an employee. Very important because you don't want to get caught up. You think you got a contractor, you get audited or something happens and you find out that that person is designated as an employee. It's very expensive to correct that error. Taxes, federal, state, and local tax preparation. A well-maintained record keeping systems ensure that you are able to keep up with, with tax reporting requirements. For example, if you are an individual small business owner or contractor, then you are generally considered self-employed. Self-employed owners file a personal income tax return annually and pay estimated taxes quarterly. Again, depending on your business structure, and that's it, we're going to have that conversation in a later class, will determine which tax forms you file. So when you set up your LLC with the state of Nevada, first question we ask you in our office, are you single member or are you multi-member? Because we know that there are two different forms. But then we ask if you got an S or collection, did, did you do that? That's a different form because we need to know how to handle your financial records when money is withdrawn. When you personally take money from the account, how do we handle the distributions? just and how things flow and more importantly for your tax liability it impacts you differently depending on your tax structure business operation and tracking details first let me stop for a minute are there any questions from any other participants none so far none so far okay thank you only the small business will, will require you to track a significant amount of information such as customer sales and inventory. Without a proper record keeping system, you may lose sight of important business details leading to problems with serving your customers. If you do not know details about your customers, such as who your customers are, what your customers like, your business might be able to meet buyer needs or buyer demands. Maybe you're part of the mix. You risk disappointing a customer, maybe losing a customer forever. Staying informed of customers, their orders, and the inventory to provide for purchases is challenging. Without a proper record keeping system, though, tracking important details of your business may be impossible. I know we are brilliant. We are entrepreneurs. We are out here. We are living our best lives doing this. Customers. We are in business to earn money and service people. We want to put our best foot forward. You want to keep track of what, what you're doing. I know in my business, just to give you an idea, we are um, a tax preparation bookkeeping service. Our tax clients, we touch them. Our goal is to touch them honestly about three to four times a year. We know they're coming in during tax season, but we want them to feel good. Their families, their spouses, we send everybody birthday cards. We also send everybody Christmas cards. If we are casually and we hear something that may happen, maybe a birth, purchase of a new home, um, things like that, we send out congratulations, condolences, because we are actively involved and we are a partner in our customers' lives. And we want them to know that we are here. If they need us, we are here to listen, um, not only providing their tax needs, and also for our other services because we are a doc prep service. So we can also help them um, incorporate while we don't give legal advice. If they know what they want to set up, we can prepare their documents and do that. I can give them tax advice because I am an enrolled agent and I am able to practice with the IRS. So I take those certifications very seriously and understand the scope in which I am able to consult and work with my clients, but also let it helping them if something i mean we're talking about the numbers right because the the income that you receive is reflective of the number of people you touch you need to touch more people then we need to do something different um a customer wasn't satisfied we don't get offended by a customer not being satisfied we want to understand what we could do better in order to satisfy that customer so that that customer can go out and we can have repeat business we can grow our businesses you know, and sometimes there are some growing pains and that's OK. But if I am not willing to have hard conversations with you and tell you what I am not happy about, 
um, you, I don't want you to make that mistake again. I want you to improve for us to grow so that you can reach your dreams of being an entrepreneur, a successful business owner. Discussion points. Hmm, discuss your business record keeping practices. Number one, identify detailed records you already keep. Think about it. What detailed records do I keep? How am I keeping them? Identify planning records you already keep. Identify legal records you already keep. Identify tax records you already keep. And I would just take the time. I mean, while you're sitting, maybe, you know, in the morning you wake up and you just, you know, before you get out of bed, what records do I keep? How do I keep them? How am I planning for my business? Legally, what are my requirements? Get a notebook, put it by your bed, just jot it down. Um, what tax records do you keep? How do you keep them? Where are they? If you need them, are they readily available? You know, think more about your record keeping. Are there records that you don't need to keep? Why not? What are the requirements? Did we miss any records that you currently keep? You know, um, think about it. For your business and what do you do, what do you need to have? Where are your business licenses? Can you readily assess them? Where are your employee records? Are they up to date? Are you requiring your employees to do timesheets? If so, are you signing your timesheets? Do you do annual evaluations? If not, start. But things that we talked about, take the time and read through the participation guide just to make sure that you are starting from the basics because you might not know what you don't know, but what you can learn can basically change the, traje the trajectory of your business. Record retention. Not only should small business owner ke owners keep good records, but owners should also know which of these records to retain and for how long. Very important. You need to know how long you need to keep the stuff. With digital um, files, it's a lot easier to keep more records. Um, if your storage space, depending on the size storage space you have, I know paper files. We just went through our office and we had tax returns. Oh, from 2001. <laughs> and I had to giggle because those files have seen three different states. I've carried them with me and we finally got a shredder and we just shredded everything. You know, um, and you, you just want to have a system in place. And we understand now we only need to keep records for about 10 years. So everything prior to 2012, depending on if there were property transactions, we shredded so that we had less documents in the office. Good record retention is the best interest of companies. A poor system of retention will prevent managers from retrieving information needed to make sound business decisions. A poor record keeping retention system also poses a security risk. Ver depending on your business and what information you have, will determine how secure your system needs to be. For us, we started using a cloud, so a cloud server for our taxes that has multiple passwords in order to access because we no longer wanted to keep records, man, hard copies of social security cards in a locked room in a cabinet. We wanted, in, I'm sorry, in a locked cabinet. We wanted them in a storage area where you have to go through different channels in order to access the information. This table shows um, a sample, number one, a sample of records to keep, two, for how many years. The IRS determines some record retention guidelines. Other retention requirements are legal in nature, such as what may be required by contract with those you do business with. Expert recommendations vary. Again, expert recommendations vary. Best practices, whoever has the longest time, that's the one you follow. Because if they have the longest time, you're in compliance with everybody else, just as best practices. Also, retention schedules vary by region. For example, a state may have a different statute of limitations for legal liability lawsuits. Check with an attorney for legal requirements and check with your um, accountant for financial requirements. We didn't have this conversation when I was young and I was in business. I remember the first thing my mentor told me, you want to have access to an attorney, you want to have access to an accountant. And I thought, well, I'm an accountant. He was like, mm, no, you really want to talk to another accountant outside of yourself. So 
access to an attorney, access to an accountant. And in today's age, you also want to have access to somebody in marketing and advertising, social media, because social media is huge if you're growing your business. But an accountant, an attorney, always want to have access because you want to be able to ask questions and get good answer. There's a, there should be a sample in your participation guide of the record retention schedule. And we'll just talk, I'll just talk about some of them. Um, accounting and financial. For auditor reports, annual statements, they say permanently keep them. For invoice and receivables, five years. Checks and payables, five years. Inventory, four years. For personnel, payroll, six years. Contracts, four to five. Personal files, personnel files, three. Insurance records, five. Time cards, two. Retirement plans, you keep them permanently. And you want to keep them permanently because someone might have worked for you, been vested, and might not draw their retirement until 20 years from now. So you want to keep the records permanently. Business and corporate contracts, seven years. Copyrights, permanently. Correspondence, three years. Property records, permanently. Um, customer records, business specific. Sales records, business specific. Licenses, permits, policies. Now, if you are every year having to renew your business license, I keep all of them. Um, and I just, just, I got it 20, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 20, I mean, just every year I keep them. Um, but I'm, I, I, I like looking at the paper and it's, then it's a reminder sometimes for me when I go back and look at it. You've done the work, you've been in business. And it was good. It was not so good. It went up, down, around. It was going up, and then it's, it goes, it, it, it levels off and goes up again. Um, had a lot of peaks, not a lot of valleys, little valley, but peaks. Um, but I'm watching as I become better at my business, my business gets better. Are there any questions? No, no. Still not? Okay. I think I went the wrong way. I don't know what I did. Okay, got it. Record keeping tools. Starting your business with a simple record keeping system. As your business grows, expand your record keeping system to accommodate more records and increasing complexity. Okay, so you want to find a system too that you can grow with. So you got simple paper tools, tickler systems, computer systems, cloud, cloud computing systems. Simple paper tools, file folder, hanging folder, cabinet storage, accordion file. I've used all of them. I have all of them. And we have and, and use them all, organize them, just to ensure that we have the records. Because you can take the file folder, put it into a hanging folder, put it in the cabinet for storage. And sometimes we have, I used to have accordion files. When bills used to come in, I remember this. When bills used to come in, I would open a bill and I had an accordion file with the date that they were due and I would put them in five days before the date. When that day came, I would pull them out to pay the bill so that I was organized before I got to a computer system where I can put in a due date and pull the report. But a paper system just helped me to become aware, kept the accordion file, and that's how I started. Well, this is my very first business probably in the late 90s how I would just manage and then I was an accountant that how I started managing some of my clients too so that I can ensure that we were at least meeting our due dates. A tickler system. So many business owners use a method sometimes called the tickler system by remembering upcoming events such as quarterly taxes, licensing, um, insurance renewals, upcoming bills, callbacks. And I guess what I used to call what I guess what it was, it wasn't a tickler system for me, but it wasn't. Mine wasn't monthly, it was daily and I knew when stuff was um, was due. Um, quarterly taxes because I was an accountant. I knew as the reporter we had to do certain reports. Licensing renewals again, I've always was observant and looking around my office and I knew when the bill, I looked out for the bill so that when the bill was due, I always tried to pay the bill minimum 10 to 15 days before the bill was due. Okay. A computer system. While most businesses will need to maintain some form of paper based record keeping, computer based systems are becoming the norm. Implement computer based systems over time as you become more comfortable with computer record keeping. 
With computer systems, your records will take less space and can be transmitted over the internet. Many businesses and government agencies will allow you to purchase goods, apply for licenses, and pay, see, pay fees over the internet. Remember, back up computer records to, to separate hard drives daily at a remote location if possible. So we use our computer system, and next we're going to talk about cloud computing, and then I'll give you my spiel on, on both of those. As an alternate to the supplement paper-based computer system, one more option is becoming increasingly available, cloud computing. You use cloud computing to store, manage, and process data on the internet rather than using a local personal computer. The advantages of cloud computing are that, one, you don't have to install software upgrades, you are less likely to lose your data because of computer crashes, and you can access your information, such as financial information, from any location that, ha that has access to the internet. So I want you guys to think about that. So cloud computing, even though it's data storage, how many of us get on our phones and look up our bank information? Cloud computing. Um, how many of us use Microsoft 365? They have um, cloud storage. Store your files there. I use it more now than ever before um, because I am able to access client information without being in my office. And if, I, if I'm asked the question, it's easy for me to answer it because all I have to do is my phone, find a client file, read it real quick to see what we're talking about. Um, QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online, amazing option because you're not married to a computer, you're married to the internet, you just need to have access. Makes it a lot easier and I can service clients differently from wherever I am and not being married to being in my office in front of my computer that has the software that I use in order to um, work that computer. I also have a app, well, an app on my laptop at home that I can access my computer at work. Um, it's called Log Me In. And I log into my system sometimes because there are some things that I only want on my computer at the office that's backed up. Um, like my customer invoicing and a lot of my personal, my business's financial records are only at my office. And I have to log on to my computer at my office in order to access them. That's just something that that I do. Are there any other, um, Delisa, you got any suggestions on things that that you may do in order to keep records? Um, I, um, use I use Teams, and okay. that helps us. That's where we we also have backup storage. Uh, we have three layers of of backups, so in case we ever lose it, our files are never really lost, or it, it would be really hard to lose all three of those backups. So we do have that tertiary system, um, and for like making sure that I'm paying licenses and renewing, making sure health care and things like that are renewed on time um, and bills are done on time. I use teams for reminders, like you could put task in and it will remind you when things are due. We also have a, a system where we track all of our bills, bills that are due monthly, bills that are due quarterly and bills that are due annually to help us keep track and making sure that we're paying our business licenses on time and things like that. Okay, thanks, Lisa. And that's cloud because Teams is Microsoft, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Cloud computing accounting. We talked about this briefly. Um, some accounting software companies offer their product with online accounting options. Instead of buying a software which runs on your computer, you pay a monthly fee to use an accounting service on the internet. The software processes the financial data storage, both of which reside on the accounting company's server or, and are provided over the internet. Um, cloud computing accounting is huge. And I know for me, it makes it easier to work with clients. If we both have access to QuickBooks Online, we can actively, we're in there, we're sharing, we're showing screens. I'm teaching, showing, you know, where we can improve, where we can get better. We're changing stuff, upgrading stuff. It works. It's an interactive meeting with our clients. Now, we do have some clients that prefer not to be online. They want, you know, you do it and you give me the records and we'll handle it. That's fine, too. But love cloud accounting. It makes life a little bit easier, a little bit simpler. Cloud computing file hosting. 
if you use computer files in your business, you can store and share those files with colleagues and clients using an internet file hosting service. The files can be made accessible from any location with access to the internet by multiple people. You can use file hosting to archive large amounts of data, both free and fee-based hosting services are available. Again, accessing what your, what, what your company needs and really knowing what your company needs and then figuring out how, how do you get there? Because first you wanna know where you're going and then how do we get to that destination? And then how do we always improve on it? Business software, I just said it, evaluate your needs. You know, there are a lot of software packages, spreadsheets, email, accounting, figure out what works for you. If you tried something that doesn't work, that's okay. Try something else. You are in business and you wanna be as efficient and effective as possible. You know, and sometimes it, it might be a little bit slower. You might be confused. Talk to some people. See with other entrepreneurs, what do they use? What have they found successes with? What are the pitfalls that they've had with certain things? Because we need to have those conversations too. You know, everything is not always, hey, it was fabulous. No, that wasn't good. And it's okay to say that. It's okay to say that because you might save someone else the hassle of having to go through and say, well, you want to know what? I didn't understand that when that one was kind of hard, um, but I did try this. Um, and just see what works. When choosing software, it is a good idea to determine your particular business needs. Say it again. Businesses can be retail or wholesale, service or product based, a one person operation or a large establishment, housed in a commercial space or based at home. Do your research to make sure you buy software that makes your business that feeds that I'm sorry that matches your business type and size. Also consider factors such as these when deciding what software packages will work for your business. Do you need multiple users? Is there industry spe specialization? Are you e-commerce? Inventory tracking, online options, manufacturing based options, point of sale system, system integration. What does your system mean? And somebody might be saying, well, what does all of this mean? You know, do you have a need to track customers? Um, do you need to track, you know, who your customers are or do you need to track the food you're selling? What's more important? If you're a restaurant, you need to track, you know, just what customers are buying. Not necessarily who's buying, but what they are buying. But if you are an architect, you want to know more about your customer and your customer needs. Okay. So depending on the type of industry you're in, just, you know, think tank, think about what does my business need? Your business software choices will probably fall into the following categories, which are discussed. Inventory, online sales, manufacturing, and specialized. Inventory, businesses with inventory requirements use software programs that will track inventory purchases and sales. Most accounting programs have inventory tracking features. Study the inventory capacity of the software you are considering to see if capacity will meet your needs now and in the future. Um, inventory is probably one of the most complex things to monitor. And I always recommend going with an inventory software, something that specializes in inventory, and then we'll figure out the accounting stuff on the back end because it is sometimes complex to, um, you, you want to find an inventory system. That's what I, I would do. I would find an inventory system that can track your inventory, that gives you good numbers, that tells you how your inventory is turning over and all the inventory schedule if you are heavy in inventory. Online sales. Businesses sell products online using either internet, inter, the, uh, using either an internet site like eBay or a dedicated business website. Some accounting programs can access a business online sales information. Be sure to investigate if the software you are you are considering will work with your system online. Manufacturing. If you are manufacturing a product, investigate the inventory features of your business accounting software to see if the software will work with your manufacturing processes been in business for a very long time. Um, 
get an inventory software. I always write, go get an inventory software and we'll figure out how to get it into the accounting software. Some softwares would not merge them where they might say that they're compatible. You'll spend more time figuring out how they are compatible. And it might be easier to have the inventory system run the inventory so you know what the inventory needs and do journal entries in the accounting software to talk about where the adjustment needs to be. Um, but inventory is very intense, very complex. And if you're running inventory, I would use an inventory based software. Business software and emails. You probably already have familiar with an email system. Email has become a significant mean, means of doing business, more common than regular mail in, in, in many cases. Most business owners communicate with clients, employees, suppliers, vendors, independent, pro, in, independent contractors using email. Keeping a good filing system for your email communication is as important as keeping a good paper-based system. Most email services will allow you to create files just as you would for a paper system for keeping your email. You can manage email with your local computer hard drive. However, many email services provide a web mail client, client as part of their internet service package. As with any web application, the main advantage of web mail over the use of desktop email client is the ability to send and receive email wherever there is a web browser. The main disadvantage of web mail is the need to be connected to the internet while using it. Email, all of us are familiar, most of us are familiar with it. We have Gmail accounts, we have Yahoo accounts, we have AOL accounts, we get our email on our phone, we can respond on our phone. Email has, is, is light years away from where it was when I started, when, when I first started doing the business. We communicate email. I know a lot of my older clients still, you know, pick up the phone and call me. Call me, don't send me an email, call me, I'm mailing you a check. So we, the general, you can really see the, 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 the generations and, you know, just how we conduct business with, with who we're working with. So email, very important, and it allows you to track conversations that you had in the past. You might not remember the details. With email, you can go back, you can read a conversation, get a better understanding, and it's easier to store, especially if you have um, cloud storage. Software and spreadsheets. Spreadsheets can be used for client information, inventory timesheets, scheduling, budgeting, and more. A spreadsheet is a computer application that simulates a paper accounting worksheet. The spreadsheet displays multiple cells in a two-dimensional grid consisting of rows and columns. Each cell contains text, numbers, or formulas. Spreadsheets are frequently used for projections and or financial what-if scenarios because a spreadsheet will recalculate automatically after a change to a single cell. Any basic spreadsheet software from work for, for most business needs. I am an Excel fan. Been using Excel now for almost 30 years. Um, and it is amazing when you understand how to use the spreadsheet, especially we use them for a lot of our new businesses. We have a, a um, business planning tool where we can basically run projections and forecasts using an Excel spreadsheet that populates based off the business you want to go in, the startup capital you need, the projections for what you want to sell. It also does a cash flow analysis for us, a balance sheet, a profit and loss statement, and you can see um, repayment of loans. It calculates so many things. Payroll, if you want to hire people and you want to give them three to five percent raises when a couple of years, you input all of this information in a spreadsheet and it gives you this fabulous numbers. Um, it, we have that tool at our office. If it's something that you may be interested in, we can email that to you. If you are looking, starting a business, looking to grow a business, and you want to use just a spreadsheet for some financial projections to help you think through. Again, our office number is 702-382-5737. Again, 702-382-5737. Um, business software accounting. Woohoo, this is my favorite. Yay, I love it. Okay, accounting. I know people are like, oh, accounting. I love accounting. If you are starting your first business, you will quickly find out how important accounting software is to the success of your business. Again, very important to the success of your business. Accounting tells your story with numbers. Accounting tells your story with numbers. 
Accounting software keeps track of your business financial records, such as sales and expenses, inventory and assets. The software delivers many advantages over a manual system, helping you to execute, manage, and track your critical financial transaction and related financial activities. Accounting software duplicates the function of a manual system, but reduces human errors. Financial numbers are accurate because most calculations are done automatically, eliminating errors such as transposition of numbers or other human mistakes. Also, accounting software speeds up the calculation process. Small business accounting softwares will help you to systematically organize your financial information in a way that is easy to access. To access. For example, if you want to know if a certain bill was paid, an accounting system should be able to tell you not only if the bill was paid, but the check number and other details, such as details you may have reported about the vendor. If you want, if you lose an invoice or a bill, information or for sending duplicate invoices or bills can be found in that program. Accounting software can be very affordable and a great value. Costs for training should be considered, but those costs are usually affordable for the small business owner. If you are hesitant to get new software because your computer is old and unreliable, consider using online versions of the software. Do not forget how much you will save in tax preparation every year once your information is all organized and not in manually entered notebooks or in shoeboxes. Generally, as you buy more sophisticated and expensive accounting software, you are buying more memory volume, inventory sophistication, mobile function, and industry specific reports. Accounting, very important because with, I use QuickBooks. QuickBooks is my, is my go-to. And what I find is with our clients, the first thing I ask, especially if they're doing their own accounting software, did you reconcile your bank accounts? And like, huh? Did you reconcile your bank accounts? Reconciling your bank accounts not only causes you to read the finance, read the read the bank statement, but now you're also making sure that everything that was in um, that's in your system is also on your bank statement. And if there's some checks that weren't cleared, or numbers were entered correctly, or um, deposits that were in transit, some money that was supposed to be deposited into your account that wasn't deposited into the account or money that was deposited that you didn't report in your accounting system. It helps you to reconcile. So that you can see on a monthly basis. What's going on? Um, and. If you are keeping up to date with your accounting records, the reconciliation can be as little as maybe. 10, 15, 20 minutes. If sometimes I get behind, one time I was behind, I had to do six months and I was doing six months of reconciliations and realized that I was missing transactions. Luckily, luckily enough, we have a good tracking system. I was able to go back, see all the transactions. I need to create some deposits, deposit them into the right account, transfer some money, do different things. But when I keep up on a daily basis or a weekly basis, my bank re reconciliations probably take me about 10 to 15 minutes each. No, um, I enjoy doing accounting because I get to analyze, look at my numbers, look at my business, see what I can do better, see what I can do differently. How can I improve what things I need to do more of and what things I need to let go of? Um, I've been in business for in Vegas, like I said, for 15 years, but I have been in the accounting arena since the early 90s. Been through a lot, seen a lot, love small businesses because I love the energy that I get from entrepreneurs. Take some time to think about your accounting system now. Describe it to me. Or describe it. How can you improve it? And what specific improvements are improvements are you thinking about? Um, is there anybody on the call that wants to talk about their accounting system? Anybody? Delisa, you want to talk about your accounting system? Yeah, we also use QuickBooks Online. And uh, well, we actually have it. It's integrated with our CRM that we use because we're a chamber of commerce. We use a CRM that is for chambers. So our QuickBooks Online is integrated with that, wherein we can invoice our members through our CRM, and it all syncs over to our QuickBooks Online. 
Uh, we do work with Crawford Management, so it's great to work with her. As she mentioned, she teaches me a lot, and um, I'm able to learn a lot working even virtually with her using QuickBooks Online, so we can do it from anywhere, as she mentioned before. Great way to track your progress. Um, I'm working right now on our budget, so but you can do budgets in there. It's just all around a great system to keep track of your business and how your cash is flowing and, and how, how your sales are going and different things like that and make projections. And make projections and you can also see when you, when you don't do things right, right? Yes, when definitely. You, when, you mis, when you misclassify stuff and what does that look like and, and then how to fix it. You know, and it takes time, but it when you work with someone, you want to work with them because you want to understand your numbers. Very important about accounting, um, even if you hire accounting professionals. You want to ensure that the person is, because um, sometimes as accountants, we have a habit of, because we understand what we're doing so we can move faster. Tell us to slow down. Stop. Explain it to you. You know how much money you earn during the month. Um, and if your financial statement doesn't say that, ask the question, well, I earned, you know, $5,000 this month. My financial statement only says that I earned three. Where's my other $2,000? So you want to ask us the questions, but you want to be able to read the financial statements and understand what they are saying to you. So you want to work with a professional that is going to work with you, meet you where you are, and then help you to gain the understanding of your business. Because at the end of the day, those tax returns, um, compliance issues, employment issue, everything falls on you. And you want to be around competent professionals that are going to not only give you good information, but also have hard conversations with you. Hard conversations. And people tell you sometimes, no, that's not how you do this. You do it this way, you do it that way. Well, here's another recommendation. While we can't make you do anything, we should be able to give you good information so that you can make the best decisions because you are an entrepreneur, you are a business owner. And at the end of the day, this is your vision and majority of the liability falls on you. Business software and training. You know, when you choose to use business software, be sure to get trained in its use. I can't say that. Whenever you use a business software, be sure to get trained in its use. And training comes in a whole bunch of different ways. You know, thank you to the Urban Chamber of Commerce because we're having these conversations. Um, YouTube. YouTube is my go-to because you can put, you Google something and a YouTube video comes up, somebody's going through exactly what you need to do and how to use it. Um, but you want to make sure that you can use all of, the, of its capabilities when you when you get software. Training will make you more efficient and more effective, more effective in the use of software, both of, of which will save you time and money. Take advantage of the options available for training, such as tutorials, free trials, and online training. Here are some ideas of how learning how to use an accounting software. Now, what I can say about an accounting software is you want to understand the basics of accounting. Basic formulas um, for a balance sheet. Your assets equals your liabilities and your equity. Equity for a profit and loss statement. Revenue minus cost of goods sold equals your gross margin minus expenses equals your net income or net loss. You want to know those basic formulas so that every transaction falls in one of those categories. And when you understand the basic formula, when you're looking at a, a, a accounting software and you're looking at the financial statements from your inputs, when you understand it or just have a basic understanding, you can say, OK, maybe something's not right. Maybe I didn't do something right. Maybe I need to do something different. Maybe I didn't classify this right. Um, but understanding how the software works in accounting, most softwares are driven by a chart of accounts, you know, and we'll get more detail into that. But you want to make sure that your basic is set up. You have good accountants, good bookkeepers, and you are getting the information that you need for your business so that you know what your numbers should look like, but that the software you're purchasing is helping you achieve your goals of financial success in your business. Other resources are SCORE, community colleges, like I said, accountants, bookkeepers, consultants. A lot of people out here train on different softwares. Take advantage of the training. Go learn something. Because as a business owner, you will always be learning. More importantly, start now. Pick a system 
if you don't already have one, use a combination of system, but start your record keeping now. Um, you really want to start it if you haven't. We are in October, so we are in the fourth quarter. We are gearing up for, for us. We are gearing up for next tax season. Clients that we currently have, we're cleaning them up through September 30th. So in January, we only have three months. We can get those tax returns done. They are on their way, working their 2023. And we are helping new clients come in to help them with our system because we have a system in our office that we use for small business owners to help them track and become better business owners. But do something, do something and start now. Key points to remember, as a small business owner, you will need to track a significant amount of information. No matter the type, size, or complexity of your business, establish and maintain a proper record keeping system that is suited for your particular business needs. Regardless, of whether you use a computer system, a cloud-based computing system, or a combination of these two, you will need to think about business software. There are many software products to help you keep records for your business. The most common uses, so, uh, the most common uses of software packages are for email, spreadsheets, and accounting. Pick one. Pick one. Pick one record-keeping software or use a combination but start now. In summary, we have covered a lot of information about record keeping. Is, are there any final questions that anyone has? I did, Dr. Ison. So you mentioned QuickBooks a lot, so obviously it's something you like, but um, what other systems would you recommend if not like, okay so i know some people like uh i've seen fresh books i've seen peach tree i've worked with um a lot of the higher end software some of the higher ends mip um i am open to what my client wants to use because i understand accounting quickbooks this has always been my go-to What software do you currently use? None, so I'm asking. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I would Google them because I know um, I think Apple has a has an accounting package. I haven't used it, um, but I am a, a um, versatile professional. I've used many different packages. I just always found it easier, and I always re resort back to QuickBooks because they have different packages for different levels depending on what your needs are. Thank Any you. other questions? You're welcome. I hope that helps. Any other questions? All right, so what have you learned today? Somebody share with me. Tell me if, if, if this was beneficial for you. I would say beneficial and um, overwhelming. <laughs> uh, it is, oh, okay, so I'm, I, I am going to say this. Record keeping is overwhelming um, because we are inundated with so much information regularly. What I can is it's an elephant, one bite at a time. One bite at a time, become pro pro proficient in one thing. You know, first I would identify the industry that I am in. What does the industry use for uh, um, software packages? Um, and then figure out where you are. Do you, I mean, how much money can you spend? What's your budget? How much money can you spend on an accounting software package? Um, more importantly, learn how to use it. In any software, CRM um, packages, learn how to use it. Watch tutorials, um, ask questions. You know, um, Facebook, get on Facebook groups, find a Facebook group, some people that are using this software, see what they're saying. You know. Um, Use your phone because that's one of your biggest resource. Look up stuff. Just read about it. You're a business owner. You want to know. Any other comments? But I thank you. What's your name? What's her name, Delisa? 
Dr. Isom. Hi, Dr. Isom. Thank you. Any other questions? I was just going to um, add to that, that when it comes to like keeping track of your licenses and renewals that you have for different things, especially when it comes to like personnel files or um, payroll taxes and things like that, I think it's really great to have that list that reminds you you have to do this quarterly or this weekly, monthly and annually so that you do stay on top of it and just put dates next to it. So if you know you need to renew your business license every July, put a date to remind you in June and get it done or things like that. I think that that's really helpful for me at least to stay on top of it. Is that they send you, you know, your email. Email is very important. Get an email that you're going to use consistently, <laughs> right? Um, I've watched some people, you know, they go from email to email. You know, um, I think I've had my email now for a decade. And all of my business stuff goes to my, 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 not my personal email, my business email. And I check it, my license renewals, when things are happening. And more importantly, I read my emails. Kind of sort them out. Um, and as I have become better in business, I have learned more. And as I learn more, I do better. And I am consistently still learning, consistently still learning. And want to be a resource to help someone because I did I know all of this when I first started? Absolutely not. You're looking at 27 years of, 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 as being an entrepreneur and the different challenges that I've had and what I had to overcome. Like I said, some things I've kept, some things I didn't keep. But it's OK. I knew that I wanted to grow my business and I was willing to do what it take in order to grow. Um, there are evaluations for the training. I am going to ask that. I guess, Lisa, if you could send out the participants an evaluation and they can give us an evaluation on the training. And then we can make improvements and I want you guys to be critical. Talk about what we can do better. You know, um, I love when people give you all fives, but I also like when people give us all ones because we want to know how we can improve because we want to be a service to this community, to, to, to anyone that wants to get on, look at this webinar. We want you to learn something and gain something from the time that you spend with us. Um, some additional information, FDIC website, good website just to go and visit, learn your way around to see what are the requirements? You got money in the bank, is it insured? want to know that you know um my favorite is irs.gov you want to know something irs.gov amazing site if you don't have a personal account set up set one up when you're getting your personal taxes done you can go to this site to see if the person that filed your return actually filed your return it says it on the site if you filed your return you can see if it was processed when is your um if there's a balance due, if you get a refund, all the stuff is on that site. Um, SBA.gov, amazing resource for small business owners. That's what they're there for, small and micro businesses. Go to the site, read through it, see what's available. You'll be shocked at what you might learn. And then MyMoney.gov. And MyMoney.gov is a federal government one-stop shop that provides financial education resources for more than 20 federal agencies again you want to know what's out there what's available to you um why it is important to you know just as a business owner to really um i think this will stop sharing and really as a business owner to really um to really be good at working because this is working on your business and not in your business. And you want to be proficient at working on your business. With that, Delisa, I return control of this meeting to you. Thank you to the Urban Chamber of Commerce. It's always, always a pleasure um, serving for you. I can't wait to go back in person because you know I love being in person doing these classes. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. We will be sending you all out the evaluation form. I put Leah's phone number in the chat as well as our email. Um, you will also get a recap of this video and past videos from the past webinars that we are, have had. They are going on every Thursday at 9 a.m., so hope to see you back here next week. You'll get an email with more information by tomorrow. Thank you all for joining us, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you.
Thanks.